Hello and welcome from Heat Vision. I'm Jamie Reed, and I look after non-video products at Hype Vision. Today, we're looking at how to set up your AX Pro wireless intruder alarm system so that it complies with PD 662 2017. So what is PD 662? PD 662 is the number of the document published by the British Standards that details a number of standards that would be used together to achieve compliance. It also assures clients that the alarm system in terms of equipment and configuration will be in line with the latest European and British standards. With PD662 enabled on AX Pro and the correct configuration setup, the AX Pro is compliant to PD662 and will upload a confirmed alarm to the alarm receiving centre that I will now refer to as an ARC. In the table below, you can see the standard CID code and CO3 um, protocols <clears throat> excuse me, uh, for a confirmed and confirmed alarm restore. What I'll do now is I'll switch between uh, my mobile device where I've got Hype Pro Connect set up just to show these screens and how, how you would get to them. The screen in the middle is the mobile uh, screenshot and the one on the right would be the one through Hype Pro Connect through a web browser. Okay, so, so as you are clicking to Hype Pro Connect, and you can see that um, normally we'd start through to the main homepage where you'll have the area, device, and status tab. But what we'll be doing is we'll be looking to the top right hand corner of the hexagonal icon, and that is the settings for the, for the AX Pro system. You see we have a number of different menus. We'll select the system and then system options tab. And then right at the bottom, you'll see that PD6262 has been enabled already. But just to show you for different reasons, but just to show you its demonstration purposes, I'll disable and then also enable. And that's been set up straight away. So I'll just swap back to the presentation. So apologies for any second. Excuse me. So cross zone. Um, so how do we go about configuring the AX Pro alarm system to become PD666 compliant? Well, firstly, you need to be able to provide a normal and confirmed alarm signal that can be sent to an ARC within AX Pro. We use the cross zone feature to achieve both alarm signals. When the zone within the intruder alarm system has been triggered and didn't restore, it will upload a normal alarm to the ARC. Within the specified interval, if the second zone has been triggered, it will upload a confirmed alarm. To set up, this uh, to set up a device as a cross zone, we will need to access the device zone settings, which can be configured by using Hype Pro Connect, and as shown from the two screenshots, and also which I'll now show. Go back in. So you can see my screen now. Sorry, a bit of feedback there from my, from my phone. Okay, so um, I'll share my screen back in. Hopefully, you should be able to see it. Okay, so go through to Hype Pro Connect. As you see, we have the settings that, um, page that we have left over from earlier. And um, what we need to do is go back to the home device and we'll get the look at, look at the device tab. So for example, I'll look at wireless zone one, which is a normal PIR sensor. I'll click onto that device and we have the hexagonal icon in the top right hand corner that I mentioned earlier the general kind of settings icon within uh, Hype Pro Connect. We we'll click on that uh, icon there and you can see that we come with um, some system settings for the zone or device. So you see here, 
if we look uh, towards the bottom, we've got a cross zone. Now, I've already got the cross zone set up to uh, zone, another wireless zone, which is the cross zone 3. Um, but we can click them up to multiple devices, as you can see here. Um, well, I'll leave it now as the break, the, our PIR and combined break glass detector. Click OK. And that's what we need to do to set up a cross zone. So we just swap, swap, swap back to the presentation. One second. My apologies. Okay, I'll just now. So we'll then go on to a delay zone. So we have a two different situations um, when we have a delay zone and set up a delay zone through Hyper Connect. So situation one would be when the, the entry delay time is timed out, the system will upload a normal alarm. And if there is another zone being triggered, the system will then upload a confirmed alarm. The second situation, before the entry time delay has entry delay time has timed out. If another zone has been triggered, the system will enable a pre-alarm time of approximately 20 seconds. When the delay time has expired and the system hasn't unset, the panel will upload a normal alarm, the pre-alarm, and then upload a confirmed alarm, the delay zone. I'll just show you how to go about these settings here. So I'll then go back to share my screen on the like Pro Connect, which hopefully you should see in one second now. Perfect. There you see, go through to Hype Pro Connect. Um, because of, I left off the wireless zone one last time, I'll carry on through this one as well. So you click the, the settings icon as mentioned earlier in the top right hand corner, the hexagonal icon. And then as you can see, we have a that we can set up the change of zone type. So at the moment, this uh, PIR has been set up as an instant zone, which is a device that will just instantly uh, alarm if triggered. But we can see we click to the different zone types we can associate with this, this product. And you can also see we have a delay zone. When I click delay zone, you will see the entry delay time and exit delay time. And this is where we would then enable the different features throughout the system. Uh, and this will affect obviously the delay time when exiting or in entering the um, building, or could, which could be a premises. So what I'll do, I'll jump back off here and go back to the presentation. Okay, it's not going to present that. Right, so we'll jump on to the report sending delay aspect of the delay zone. So as I mentioned earlier, the entry delay zone supports a, a feature that we call the report sending delay function. When enabled, once the entry delay time has expired, the panel and the sound will alarm, but the, but the actual panel will not upload a report to the ARC and app. The panel will only upload the normal alarm to the ARC and app once the report sending delay time has expired. So as you can see here, we have a screenshot of this uh, already here, um, where we can show the zone type that I did earlier, which was a delay zone, and also the report sending delay time here. So effectively, the hub will uh, activate the sounders locally, and then after, say for example, we have here 30 seconds will expire, it will also send the alarm through to the ARC and, and also the High Connect app. We also have an emergency button uh, within our range of portfolio products, which I have here today. This is uh, one that's on a pendant. And there are three ways to trigger our emergency button. So we have a, a long press, a press, which is just a press once, um, and also a double press function. So from the two of these three options listed above can be chosen to trigger the intruder alarm system. And the range time uh, bet between the, uh, these devices being set 
say for example a long press and then a normal press button is uh, between eight hours and 20 hours by default the set time is eight hours if only one is pressed within the preset alarm time the system will only upload a normal alarm if the true two trigger methods are pressed in the preset time say for example eight hours the system will upload both a normal and confirmed panic alarm as you can see by here um, so on the, the one that I'm covering with the cursor now will show what the will look like through the mobile app of Hype Pro Connect. You can see that there is a press and a press and hold. The screen on the right hand side is what you would see through Pro Connect if you used to log into it via a web browser. Now we also have a feature called the final door exit. And so by enabling the final door exit function, um, this is for a magnet detector or a draw magnet and shock detector. If you close the door, um, if, which would have the magnet detector fixed to the door and frame during the exit delay time, the system will be automatically set once the door is closed without waiting for the exit delay time to finish its countdown. So for example, we have a exit delay time of 30 seconds. So we set the alarm, which I'll uh, do now by using our proximity, uh, uh, my fair proximity tag here. Presented to the hub that we have here. It will start to do a timer, which you should hope is here now. What we're doing this is to, to set in the system. So we have the door contact here. We open the contact and then we will close it again. And that will cut down the alarm time say for from the example given there 15 seconds the door opens and news leaves the house as soon as we close that contact uh, the 10 seconds remaining uh, that would then sit the set the system and the countdown would end so we count that the actual system set effectively as soon as the door closes Now, we also have a wireless sounder, uh, an internal and external within our portfolio. And the wireless sounder can be chosen to activate if one of the two, uh, if one of the following occurs. So uh, when a detector has been triggered, so when the alarm has been set and someone's walked past uh, one of the devices, when a confirm alarm has been triggered, so that could be um, what we would call in trade sometimes a double knock or a two different zones being activated to create, to create that confirmed signal. And also um, the tamper. So that would be when the lid uh, has been has been opened. As you can see by the two um, screenshots on, on, on the presentation, you see that you can enable um, one or all of them. And so by default, all of them are enabled. Uh, we also have a, a variety of status indicators on the actual panel here. So within the actual hub, you see the top layer here, you will see what's effectively shown on the hub indicators um, in the presentation here. So starting from left to right, we have the, uh, the fault signal, which would be kind of the tri triangle um, sized icon. Then we have the cloud connection, which is um, the connection to like, Pro Connect and also to the Arc. Um, so the kind of internet connection parts of it, and that's a cloud icon. Uh, that will flash, uh, a, it will remain a green color, which I'm not too sure if you can see here, but that is what we've got at the moment on the hub. If the system has been um, unset or has been set, then the uh, icon with the house with the, uh, with the padlock inside will be will light up a, a, a blue color. And that will show whether the system is also set. Um, when you walk out also as so when you walk in you can see that if it's on if it's a blue eye light that isn't flashing it is the system is on it's been set um, if there is no light which we have at the moment there's no light there it means it, it, it hasn't been set we also have the last icon on the right which just shows what your assignment goes into alarm and it will be a red light that flashes we also have the similar indi uh, indicators for our peripherals. So this would be our tag reader and also our wireless um, code keypad as well. So we have the similar um, icons as you can see with the only difference really being um, the second one on the left, which is the signal connection between the actual peripheral device and, and the actual hub. To set this up within the, the Hype Pro Connect, uh, we go into system options 
which is uh, one of the ones we, we feature quite often. It's the one above the PD666 uh, enable disable button that we see here. Um, and as you see, you can enable and disable by clicking on the sliders here. It's very similar for the web browser on it as well. So just to go through to Hype Pro Connect and what we call an alarm restoration. And so if the Pro Hub has received a confirmed tamper alarm, the end user will only be able to silence and unset the injury alarm system. However, when they then try to set the alarm afterwards, the end user will receive a voice prompt from the hub, as well as also a, a, a visual notification through Hype Connect, which we can see here, um, telling the end user that they need to contact their installer so that the installer can restore the alarm. So to do this, uh, you go through to High Pro Connect through uh, as the installer, and then you click either of these two icons in the bottom right hand corner, and this will restore the system for the end user. You can do this remotely, and this is one of the great features of High Pro Connect, you don't have to be on site to do this. So this is a feature that can be done remotely, so you don't have to drive to the site to, to enable this. So we have a variety of ARC communication um, options, shall I say, and one of them that we have is uh, an interface that adds a communication fault sending delay. So this will be when the panel has an ATP communication fault, the APT communication fault report uploads to the ARC and the range of the delay time between the actual delay, the, the actual fault happening in between the ARC is between 30 minutes and 250 minutes. By default, the delay time is 180 minutes. As you can see by these two screenshots here, this is where we'd go about setting the time. So it's within the system options, which is the hexagonal icons on the right hand corner of the main page. Um, it's below the PD6 uh, feature or function, should I say, that we enabled earlier at the start. And then you can see here, you can click on to the drop down uh, box and then obviously select how long the time would be. To do for the web browser, very, very similar process. Um, it just looks slightly different. Um, and you can see that it's done in seconds here rather than minutes. So, um, one of the other features that we have um, through the hub, or I should say through the Hype Pro Connect, is that we can um, set a motion detection restore. So, a motion detection restore configuration decides when to upload the restore event to the ARC. If a motion detector restore is disabled, the panel will not upload any restore events to the ARC. When it is enabled, there are two options to choose from. So we have immediate after alarm or after disarm. This function is only for motion detectors, for example, a PIR detector. Um, the other detector reports are according to the actual status by default. So for example, this would mean say a door contact that we have here, it will either be open or closed, and that will then be able to restore the actual um, device. But because we're using motion detectors, we don't necessarily have that physical uh, change between the two, and they have to be done right through the app. So as we can see here, um, we've got the um, screenshot through Hike Pro Connect, you would see through either an Android or iOS device. And we can see that under the system options, very similar page that we've been speaking about throughout the presentation, there is a motion detect restore. And this is where you can set the, uh, change the functions between them. And lastly, I'll just say thank you very much for listening to us uh, today. And uh, to, if you have any inquiries, send them in. I'm just going through to the, uh, into the chat box. And um, we'll say bye for now.